When a ligand binds to the receptor site on the outside of the cell membrane, the G protein changes conformation and guanosine triphosphate replaces the guanosine diphosphate on the alpha subunit of the G protein. The activated alpha subunit then separates from the beta and gamma subunits. The alpha subunit, with guanosine triphosphate attached, binds to the calcium ion channel, causing the calcium ion channel to open. Calcium ions diffuse into the cell and combine with calmodulin. The combination of calmodulin and calcium produces the response of the cell to the ligand. Phosphorylase activity removes a phosphate from the guanosine triphosphate, leaving guanosine diphosphate bound to the alpha subunit. The inactivated alpha subunit separates from the calcium ion channel and the channel closes. The alpha subunit recombines with the gamma and beta subunits and the G protein recombines with the receptor. When a signal molecule, such as epinephrine, binds to a cell surface receptor protein, it activates a G protein on the inside of the cell. The G protein then stimulates adenylyl cyclase to produce large amounts of cyclic AMP from ATP within the cell. The cyclic AMP then binds to and activates a target protein, such as alpha kinase, which adds phosphates to specific proteins in the cell. The effect of this phosphorylation depends on the identity of the cell and the proteins that are phosphorylated. Binding of a hormone to a specific receptor in a cell's plasma membrane activates a trimeric G protein. The G alpha subunit then activates a membrane associated enzyme, phospholipase C. As its name suggests, PLC cleaves the phosphate bearing head group of phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate from its lipid tails. The head, now inositol triphosphate or IP3, and the tails, diacylglycerol, or DAG, act as separate messengers, the hormone was the first messenger, and bind other proteins to affect cellular responses.
CAMP, produced by adenylate cyclase G-protein interactions, binds regulatory subunits of PKA, protein kinase A, a tetramer. CAMP binding causes the catalytic subunits of PKA to dissociate and activate target proteins by phosphorylating them. These catalytic subunits may perform this task many times, amplifying the original stimulus signal. The final cellular response may range from glycogen metabolism to controlling transcription. This animation depicts the surface view of a target cell and its interaction with a peptide hormone as a model to demonstrate G-protein coupled signal transduction in cells. Peptide hormones generally consist of short chains of amino acids. Because peptide hormones are often quite short, they lack a rigid three-dimensional conformation and are flexible. Peptide hormones are usually water-soluble and too large to pass through the lipid plasma membrane of their target cells. Therefore, peptide hormones interact with a cell surface receptor that has an exposed extracellular hormonal binding site. The peptide hormone fits into the receptor like a key fits into a lock, and the hormonal message is conveyed to the receptor. The activated receptor then undergoes a conformational change that transfers the hormonal message into the cell. Once inside the cell, the message is converted or transduced into unique chemicals referred to as second messengers. The intracellular second messengers control the cellular biochemistry to determine how the cell should respond to the hormone. In this example, the hormone stimulates the target cell to open a membrane cation channel. When the channel opens, cations enter the cell and cause a localized depolarization that spreads over an area of the cell surface. In this model, the localized depolarization of the cell membrane represents the target cell response to the hormonal message. Finally, we fade into a view of the internal organization of the target cell that shows the peptide hormone receptor and its chemicals for converting the hormone message into the intracellular second messengers. This scene will show the details of how a target cell converts an external hormonal message into internal second messengers that produce a cellular response. The hormone receptor is a protein that has seven hydrophobic transmembrane spanning regions that project through the cell's plasma membrane. The receptor is associated with a G protein that is comprised of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. The peptide hormone assumes its active configuration fits onto the receptor binding site and conveys its message. The message results in a conformational change in the receptor that is transferred mechanically to the G protein. Mechanical activation of the G protein results in the alpha subunit replacing guanosine diphosphate with guanosine triphosphate. The activated alpha subunit separates from the beta and gamma subunits and migrates within the plasma membrane to an inactive phospholipase C enzyme. Energy captured from the hydrolysis of the terminal phosphate of guanosine triphosphate is transferred through the alpha subunit to activate the phospholipase C. The process of activating the phospholipase C converts the guanosine triphosphate back to guanosine diphosphate and the alpha subunit rejoins the beta and gamma subunits to reform the inactive G protein. Activated phospholipase C degrades phospholipids that make up the plasma membrane to produce two second messengers, inositol-145 trisphosphate and diacylglycerol. The inositol-145 trisphosphate is released from the membrane and binds to a receptor on the endoplasmic reticulum. This intracellular signal results in the release of calcium stored within the endoplasmic reticulum. 
The released calcium plus the diacylglycerol from the membrane activate an inactive protein kinase enzyme in the plasma membrane. The previous scene demonstrated how second messengers transfer the primary message from the hormone to activate an enzyme that will produce a physiological response in the target cell. Activated protein kinase from the previous scene facilitates the transfer of a high energy phosphate group from adenosine triphosphate to an inactive cation channel protein. Phosphorylation of the cation channel protein activates the channel protein and causes opening of the cation channel. Opening the cation channel allows extracellular cations, such as sodium, to enter the cell. The diffusion of sodium into the cell results in a localized depolarization of the cell membrane in the region of the channel. The depolarization spreads across an area of the cell surface. Since this is only a hypothetical model to explain G-protein signaling, the depolarization is presumed to produce an important physiological response within the target cell or to signal other cells. G-protein coupled receptors are involved in numerous physiological actions including sensory responses to light and chemicals, as well as responding to peptide hormones and other signaling chemicals such as neurotransmitters that convey extracellular information. Because of their widespread use by cells for signal transduction, G-protein coupled receptors are important targets in the development of new pharmaceuticals for medical treatments. Ahora vamos a hablar sobre receptores, proteínas G y segundos mensajeros. Para identificar o hablar de proteínas G, primero tenemos que ver dónde está nuestro receptor y qué es nuestro receptor. Vamos a ver que tiene tres dominios. Uno extracelular, uno transmembranal y uno intracelular. Nuestro dominio eh, transmembranal eh, tiene siete partes. Y nuestro dominio extracelular nos va a servir como específicamente como receptor de nuestro primer mensajero, en este caso una hormona. ¿Y qué va a ser el receptor en este caso? Todo el receptor va a funcionar como transductor. Y dice ese, va, va a hacer la transducción de la información de este primer mensajero hacia el interior de la célula. Entonces, en la parte eh, interna de este receptor se va a acoplar una proteína G con sus partes alfa, beta y gamma. Eh, se van a acoplar a la parte intracelular de nuestro receptor. Tenemos que esas proteínas G no nada más están alfa, beta y gamma. Tenemos tipos como el GS, el GI y el GQ. A lo largo de nuestra presentación vamos a explicar qué es GS, qué es GI, qué es GQ. Ok, tenemos nuestro receptor. Tenemos que llega la hormona a la parte extracelular. Nuestra proteína GS, que en este caso pues, es estimulante, por eso es GS. Nuestra adenidí ciclasa con sus partes transmembranales y sus tres partes intracelulares, dos extremos eh, donde se dan las actividades o donde va a llegar a dosarse la proteína, el GS, la proteína G. Entonces la proteína GS, su parte alfa, se va a unir a una de esas partes y con energía de que nos va a proporcionar nuestro ATP, se va a separar en AMP cíclico y pirofosfato. La importancia aquí es que con este proceso va a aumentar la cantidad de AMP cíclico en nuestra célula. Por otro lado, tenemos las proteínas G y que es inhibitoria, que al contrario de la estimulante va a inhibir el proceso de la producción del AMP cíclico, por lo tanto va a haber menos cantidad de AMP cíclico intracelular. 
La última forma es la GQ mencionada. Tenemos nuestro receptor y la hormona que se va a dosar a la parte extracelular de nuestra proteína, a la cual está acoplada la proteína G. En este caso es Q. ¿Qué va a ser la proteína Q? Bueno, va a ser un, un proceso diferente al de, al de las dos anteriores. En este caso se va, a, se va a usar una enzima, la fosfolipasa C, para que, bueno, eh, la membrana que está constituida de esfingolípidos y de, y de demás cosas, mm, uno de esos esfingolípidos que es el fosfatidinositol fosfato 2, que está marcado como PIP2 en la imagen, va a, este, va a cruzar la fosfolipasa C para convertirse en diacilicerol que se sigue en la membrana y e inositol 3 fosfato que, se va, a, que va, a ser, va a estar intracelular. Aquí la importancia de la fosfolipasa C es en nuestro inositol 3 fosfato que va a interactuar con una vesícula, una vesícula intracelular para abrir canales iónicos de calcio y así liberar el calcio que la vesícula tenía secuestrado en, en vesículas. De esta forma, en, en nuestro músculo, por ejemplo, se da la contracción y otros diferentes procesos. Bueno.